Beloved, thou hast come from the very heart of creation itself. And as I, Emmanuel, come to you, and I am with you for a full 12,000 years, one whole cycle, from the time that I entered onto your earth plane. And yet in these precious moments that we have together, please simply know me as Jesus. And indeed open your beloved hearts that in the words that I speak through this messenger, May thee be a holy blessing upon your life. I come this day to speak some important things to you. I pray thee well, your heart will be open and receptive to the truth of them. As Emmanuel, I said, I will come and come indeed I did just over 2,000 years have passed since my entry into your world and 10,000 years yet must pass for I'm given by divine intervention to be amongst you to come to your world and to come as the incarnation of the great I am. This I have accomplished and I said to those who believeth and all that I became, I spoketh to all who shall believe in my name ye shall not perish but have everlasting life I spoke not nor referred to the common name of Jesus or the Hebrew name Yeshu yet I spoke in the name of all that I became all that I was and for eternity will be my name is I am for in the short time I was given to you to be with you in your plane of existence I came born of the flesh yet the seed for my life was given by the higher mental body of my father Joseph unto my beloved Mary, my mother. And with you for a few short years, years of study, of family, years of becoming what I knew you must become, and then laying aside the body I was given to demonstrate to the people that there is yet a great hatred of the light in this world and the laying down of my life to end the crucifixion of what the peoples have done to themselves. In these years as you have entered into the seventh golden age. I am with you these full 10,000 years. And with that, 12,000 years will have passed. And then I shall return. I shall return to my own people. And there will be a great celebration. For my people, they will celebrate the return of the King. And although in your world this shall be the counting of one full cycle 
of your earth and her relationship with your son of 12,000 years yet understand the way time is measured in our worlds well you get a lot farther and a lot less time and only 120 years will have passed that the peoples of the Golden Shrine Galaxy will have been living without their king yet I have promised them when I return a great feast of the return of the king and I shall use the accomplishments that are mine in my time with you and I shall use this to advance my peoples in the Golden Shrine Galaxy we have a relationship in these 2,000 years that have passed some of you came into embodiment when I came onto the earth knowing and being prepared that a light would come to the world and many of you since my ascension have dedicated lives and too are part of those who have laid down your life believing in my name and all that I taught my name is I am today before you you have unraveled the mystery that the great cosmic being Melchizedek spoke during that time of his reign upon the throne of the father of the father's presence speaking to Moses I am that I am today blessed hearts you have in your enlightenment unraveled the mystery of these words and ye knoweth of the great individualized presence that is the true glory and the grand cosmic self of the being that you are you know of the infinite mighty I am presence that is the father and the mother of our universe and thou knowest today the third great activity I am that is the responding activity that is within all life that lives upon your planet and all life and all the kingdoms that share life upon your earth from the animal kingdom to the flower kingdom the crystal kingdom and onwards is the great fabric of life in the I am activity that is the impersonal I am known to many a Buddhist as that presence of life that responds the life as it grows upon this planet that is the impersonal life for centuries shrinks and turns unto itself for the crimes of the people against the kingdoms of the world you who are awakened and have the mystery of the great I am before you and know that this is the essence of your being and those of you who prepare as I prepared myself to stand before the throne room of creation and you know of the impersonal I am that responds to you that responds to your intelligence that responds to your love whether it be the domestication of the plant kingdom and you fill your homes with beautiful plants and love them 
and they flourish. Or whether it be the domestication of the animal kingdom and your pets respond, the I am responding presence within those animals respond to your loving care. And may I with these words insert what I had not planned to say, yet the opportunity is here before me to say to you that the peoples of earth have a great karmic debt to the other kingdoms of life, especially those kingdoms of life that carry the impersonal I am, that responds to the intelligent I am, that each of you are once again becoming. I say to you, it is a magnificent cause when you reach up to the greater and you call forth the sacred fire that will liberate the powers of nature and the elemental kingdoms. Yet the animal kingdom suffers so greatly in slaughterhouses across this planet and the karmic debt of the peoples is great. Yet you, blessed hearts, who know of the sacred fire, you who have a love of all kingdoms, it is for you to begin to include the release of the sacred fire. For these ones do not have the ability, they are the responding I am. And I say to you, the impersonal I am within a blade of grass, within a magnificent tiger, would respond to the great outpouring of your love and would respond to the sacred fire that you call from heights above to enter into the animal kingdom and to heal that kingdom of the crimes of man against animals. Would you consider including this in your prayers? And now let me continue with the matters that I have prepared to present to you. Many of my words remain in the New Testament, yet many of them have been twisted or changed and many removed. And I said to you, as my early and my first followers, in those short years that I was with you, I said to you, suffer those who are sick and diseased. Suffer those who are poor and are crippled. Suffer those, the wee children of the world, that are not given the opportunities to prosper in their lives. And thou hast suffered as I have asked you to. And within each of you, and it is becoming more apparent. And in those moments where tears flow, unexpected, and you see the suffering that is in this world, for centuries since my ascension, you have done what I have asked you. I asked you to suffer those who are less fortunate and seem not to have the blessings you have in your lives. And you have carried the suffering as I asked you to. And thou hast stored it in the feeling side of life. 
in 2010, I returned to your planet to begin the next phase of my life's work in this 12,000 year cycle with you. And I live in my retreat in Arabia that is invisible to the sight of the peoples. Yet here I am for this next phase of my life is to fulfill the prophecies and the words that God spoke through me in my short life with you to assist you to achieve what God in me demonstrated in the life that I became to become the I am presence and in the few short years that I have returned I have communed with your feeling side of life and I have called forth what I name the grieving presence to rise from your feeling side of life and to enter your heart knowing that this could bring about moments of waves of sadness or unexpected tears as you observe the happenings that are going on in the outer world. Soon I shall come upon you. I will come to you in your meditations. I will come to you in your inner vision. I will even come to you and meet you in your subjective reality that you know of as dream state when you are in the lucid dreaming. And I shall come to you and say to you, what do you have for me? And I come this day as others have come before me to illumine you and prepare you and to give you the answer that you must respond to me for the journey and the reason why I asked you to suffer all that is wrong in this world I in my ministry and in the crucifixion I took much of the suffering and the wrong and the hatred as much as life would allow me to. I withdrew that, a good portion of it, from the emotional bodies of the peoples worldwide and from the emotional bodies of those not embodied living in the plains of bliss that would open the way for the peoples of earth to have some of the pressure of darkness that had touched their lives be taken from them that it, be, that it might like be like starting over again without that heavy pressure and soon now I come to you and without your truly aware of it, each of you have been taking on through the suffering some of all that is wrong in this world, albeit in a much smaller way than was my mandate. Yet 2,000 years have passed and what has caused your awakening of what you may not remember is suffering that you have seen, suffering that you have experienced, that which has caused a burning within your heart to rise 
and to find the end of all suffering that will lead you to the glory of the great I am as you have found. Soon I will come to each of you first in meditation, vision and dreams and I come to take two things from you and then in days forward where there is more wakefulness I will come to you again in fully wakeful moments in which the very life within your bodies shall record our encounter together yet now it is to be the end of all suffering in your being for two thousand years you have been taking on some of the wrong in this world and in the few short years that I was with you I took much greater proportions of that wrong within each of you is a presence that grieves it is the suffering you have seen all that is wrong and causes such blight upon the people of earth and all life upon the earth be prepared I will come to you and I will say unto you what dost thou have for me the answer that may be most appropriate would be Lord I carry the grieving presence it has been resurrected into my heart and I have this grieving presence to give you Lord and I shall cause cause a great light within your heart that will melt this grieving presence from you and I shall bestow a blessing of my light upon you that shall grow for my light is the light of the great I am that spoke through me and I became in my freedom and I shall cast that light cause that light to blend and merge with the light of thy own majestic presence and I shall say to you then what has caused you to be less than all that I am what has caused you to be less than all that I am what has caused you to be less than all that I am your heads for a moment and your eyes may turn downwards yet you will feel my fingertips under your chin and I will say child I ask that you give me all that has caused you to be less than I am my achievements and all that I have prepared since my ascension during these past 2,000 years and with my father back in your world as the mighty Saint Germain and with the mother of heaven now upon you and our beloved mother Akasha as many will come and say to you we are ready 
for the next phase that unfolds a magnificent golden age upon this planet. I will come and I will take from you if you will give this to me. If you will say unto me, Jesus, take from me all that has caused me to be less than I am. For today you know that I am is God. And I will come unto each of you and take from you all that has caused you to be less than God. And in taking this from you, I shall offer it to the sacred fire and I shall leave a record of removing from you all that has caused you to be less than I am. And this shall open the way for our work that cometh. We have great work ahead of us. Numbers who followed me, who came to know me and loved me, began in the hundreds, then the numbers swelled into the thousands, and the tens of thousands that traveled through the lands of Galilee and across ancient Arabia. Yet those numbers were nowhere near the numbers of peoples that are in the world today that have found their own mighty I am presence. This was my mission to reveal God to the people of earth and to allow God the great I am to speak through my voice to express its presence that changeth and uplifteth all life into a state of perfection. And this process of great change and upliftment, the peoples have come to know as miracles. So be it. Then I say unto you, the peoples are being prepared for miracles. And yet it is known for reasons thou shalt not investigate, yet known to us in the ascended realms by the downward spiral and spirit of the human feels it must yet suffer more or use the madness of suffering to compel their own wakefulness. Before I come to the peoples of the world the cosmic law demands that I come before each of you who have embraced the mighty I am as I did in my ministry and in my embracement cause the great I am of life to take hold of a young prophet speak its covenants and promise to life 
And in all mannerisms of this, in three years, transition the seeming outer self as to the temple that glorifies the divine personality of our universe, the I Am Presence. Long before I can come to those who know me in various ways, yet in the presence of fear, in the Christian church today, yet I must, by cosmic law, come to you first, who have come to know me, Jesus the Christ, Emmanuel, the first living embodiment of the I Am Presence upon this earth. It is my jurisdiction. It is my responsibility. And I say to you, prepare yourself well. We must not permit a flood of tears To hold you back, one or two a tear, one or two teardrops is fine. <laughs> then we must rise in the fullness of the one presence that I am and you are to become. We must rise and busy ourselves. For I and my seraphim will come to you with Mother Akasha and shall prepare the way before you for you to be as I became in my first year of my ministry to become mighty vessels where the great I Am Presence comes and speaks through you let us be very clear for there are those whose hearts love me Yet they are taught in the presence of fear. They are taught in the presence of the book of knowledge of good and evil. And yet, even though their hearts love me, some of those in the Christian church, their fear and their belief in good and evil must yet hold some distance between us. And again, I say to you, by cosmic law, those of you who have seen that a thief has come upon my teachings and my presence and gives and offers no good reason to study a path in the Christian church that offers you the truth of who you are and the means and the ways to become that mighty presence I am. Therefore, ready yourselves. For I come to you. What do you have for me? What did I ask you 2,000 years ago? I asked you to suffer. The poor, the crippled, the diseased, and to suffer the children who do not have the blessings that you have in your lives. We have counted the time and the suffering is inside you. In the two years that I have been returned to your planet, I have called this grieving from your feeling side of life. It lives now in your heart. And from time to time, it causes tears to well up in you. And I shall ask you, 
what do you have for me? And ye shall respond to me, Jesus. I have within me what has suffered and grieved in this world. And I shall lean towards you and I shall take that from your heart and I shall melt it away into oblivion and I shall cause my light to become one with your light. This will advance you upon your path of resurrection. This will make it easier for you to feel, to know, to transmit, to express, and finally become the light of thy majestic presence, I am, that you have long waited to make of yourself on earth a great outpouring of life that finally upon this earth fulfills life. I shall say unto you, what has caused you to be less than I am? By human nature, that leaves you quickly in days ahead. A moment of forlornness will come upon you, your eyes drawn downward, and I shall catch you with my fingertips. I shall caress your face, and I shall simply say unto you, child, let me take from you now what has caused you to be less than I am. And here I say to you, prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves for total surrender. It is the last stage of letting go, of letting go of all that has caused you not to see, of all that has caused you not to hear, of all that has caused you not to be. And I shall take this from you. And the following mornings shall be likened to a fresh spring air. And even though there may be no evidence of flowers around you, there shall be a fragrance that is so sweet. And a newness within your being so evident unto you. And you will know that now all doors are open. In next moments, you shall feel an increase within yourselves on the subject of communion and adoration and find yourselves as it was given unto me in those days recorded of my time in the desert. That thou shalt fall to your knees and in those moments, the great I am of your being shall crown you, shall exalt you. And the voice of your presence shall speak, the voice of the infinite I am. This is my daughter. This is my son, who I am well proud. And the dove of transfiguration shall appear before you and you shall have been anointed having successfully passed through the anointing waters and the holy baptism of Judea. And as this is upon you, 
you shall rise a light to the world. And as your light grows in days that follow, your meditations and prayers filled with the outpouring of such love from your heart flames, then I say to you, the outer self is under transformation. And first to go is the lower human self that has known the duality of evil in this world. And then the self that appears in this world becomes a vessel. And in this transformation, the good aspect of duality shall simply become the instrument. And the perfection of life shall flow through each of you. Miracles will become common in your life. New ways to breathe the everlasting life will be yours. The Holy Spirit will be in full control and command within your lungs. Every breath in those days you shall breathe the sacred fire and your moments of transmuting the substance inside you and around you those moments will increase rapidly and then I shall come to you retire I shall say unto thy cave and thy cave may be a living room a bedroom it will be a place, and I will say unto you, Retire unto your cave, and be not seen by anyone from the outer world for those three days. Only those of your kind, those like you, shall be permitted to see you in those three days. For here you shall enter your tomb as I had my body taken into the tomb of Arimathea. And there you shall be unto thine self the Lord thy God loved into fulfillment through the love of the mother's presence. And the spoils of the outer world must not see this or witness this. Only those who are likened to you, who have come to glorify God, the mighty I am presence, only these ones must you permit to come into your cave for three days. These times that are before you in these upcoming years, there shall be no guesswork. You shall know when these moments are upon you, and thou shalt rise from thy cave, thou shalt rise from thy tomb, and the great transfiguration of the mighty I Am Presence shall cloak you in the sacred and seamless garment of life. And the resurrection is complete. You have become the I Am Presence on the earth. And you shall walk amongst the peoples as I 
walked amongst the peoples. And the peoples shall know that the grace of God is upon you and moves through you. And you shall have the power to heal the sick, to feed the poor. You shall have the power to go out into the world and teach your world of science, teach your world of commerce, teach your world of technology, teach your world of monetary systems, teach your world of energy, of all the new systems that only the Christ I am knows that is to come in the seventh golden age. I say unto you, that is a phrase in your language, and I shall use it. Mark my words. I say unto you, there are many that are in this world that make promises and most have not the power to fulfill those promises. The shadows in this world have delayed my cause, yet my cause will never be set aside. The cause of my life that commanded my presence in your world is alive within the very life that each of you are. My attainment in embodying the mighty I Am Presence that you have come to learn is your grand cosmic self. And all that I achieved in my ministry and the great love that my teacher, the Lord Maitreya, made of me to build within myself the love of the Father, allowed me continue the climb of life and in the achievements of my ascension I say to you there are few in the universe all ascended beings have become the living embodiment of the I am presence yet there are only a few and I say to you, less than ten, whose evolution has become unstoppable and has matched the evolution of the infinite I Am Presence. The Queen of Light is one of these. And so too, this is my achievement and given to you for 12,000 years. The plan always was that in the fulfillment and the promise of my own resurrection and ascension, that I would live beyond your realm for a while, and that I would go and prepare a place for each of you in the ascended master realms and from these great octaves of light I and those who raised me to my freedom in the ascension and the great anthem of the angelic voices would project upon you the great light rays and the love and the sacred fire 
that would begin to lift you and lift you one day unto me the promise and the prophecy is being fulfilled through all of you and that is why I now come to bless you and I ask you to return to your seats to your chairs in your own lives and in every lifetime you have lived since you came to greet me some 2,000 years ago you have had some magnificent lives and you have had lives that have tortured you yet no matter how magnificent have been some of those lives there has always been the absence of one great manifest activity in the outer world and this absence whether it was an absence of relationship an absence of health an absence of money and supply this absence that has carried itself through the outer worlds into your lives is but the outer reflection of the absence of God filling your lives now your time has come and it is now you are complete I ask not that you suffer the wrongs that are in the world I ask not that you suffer those who are crippled and diseased I ask now that you be raised by the same power that raised I Jesus that you be raised to go forth and do what the Christ will do to end the suffering in this world and therefore I Jesus the Christ say unto each of you I command in my holy name the I am that I am I command your life is now free your life is free of all the abundance of life that may have been absent in the lives that you have experienced since my time with you 2,000 years ago you have carried a cross you have carried a burden and I say to you the cross and the holy cross that is before you now is not the cross of crucifixion it is the cross of resurrection it is the union of God the Father and God the Mother it is the union of light and love that produces life I in the name of the Holy God the Father in which I serve with the Queen of Heaven and in my name the ascended Jesus Christ in the name of the etheric record that I left in my ascension on the hill of Bethany in the name of thy holy name 
I am, I say to you, you are free. No longer are you to carry the mantle of the suffering that is to be in this world. You are to begin your journey into everlasting life. I am the only one who have left a record upon your planet, a record of a journey into everlasting life. Now your time is upon you. And as you enter this great journey that is before you, all of God's great abundance is to be upon you. In my name, I am, I anoint you with the abundance of life and health in your physical garments. I anoint you with the abundance of life and health in your physical garments. I anoint you with the abundance of physical health and life in your physical body. And I, Jesus the Christ, command that all that you have suffered in the world that is beyond your bodies, all that you have suffered in the world of families and relationships and work and God's great supply, I command you are free of this now. You have carried this mantle. You have observed in your journey back to God the absence of God in this world and you have compelled the absence of all good things upon your life. This burden you are not to carry any longer. And in my name I am the ascended Jesus Christ and I anoint you and bless you in the full abundance of God's great family, in the full abundance of God's great energy, in the full abundance of all divine relationships, I anoint you and I bless you in the fullness of the natural way of life that offers abundance and gives to you the means and the rewards and opens the way for each of you to now go forth and add to the abundance that is in this world. Much has been stored, hidden upon your planet. Those who have come to love me and your own ascended family who supported you, the arrival of my life and my ministry and who approved of the divine plan your ascended masters who overlight you in this golden age are now given the command to reveal to you God's great resources and to make available to every one of you God's infinite energy, God's infinite health, God's infinite life, and God's infinite supply of money and all good things thou shalt require. Build within thy heart and mind. Build 
through the power of your imagination the fulfillment of God's grace and abundance upon your life again I say and this is only for you to hear again I command in my name the I am that I am and my holy name Jesus the Christ resurrected by the church I command the absence of all good things in your life is now complete and the restoration of the mantle of everlasting life and all that comes with life be upon you I saith unto you in my departing words in the forty days of my resurrection to my ascension I saith unto you remember this that is one last enemy that you must overcome and that is death and know ye this that is no death to thy spirit that is no death to the great I am the truth and the source of your life that is only one place that death registers upon the elements of the physical body it is this that I was referring to that just as I overcame death in the body so too it is your mantle yet the way is made easier for all of you I call upon the Holy Spirit and I see ye all know not the source of the Holy Spirit a promise fulfilled by Lord a son Lord Melchior and Lord Melchizedek in the great central sun if I be raised unto thee O Holy Father I shall raise all who follow me and in this covenant I am granted 12,000 years to serve in my oneness with the Heavenly Father and to bestow upon you in the end of the ages of man that has come the age of Christ the dawning of the Christ and ye shall be those who follow in my footprints and ye shall leave a record and ye shall leave a record of physical garments that shall not pass through the shadow of death for thou shalt liberate them by your efforts and the hand of God that comes to you through my presence and the presence of others who come and serve you in your ascended host be well prepared O America for I say unto you those are a different group in a short future who shall find good reason to lose their artificial hope and their artificial faith those who turn away from the light those who build great greed in their ways and take from the peoples those who cause people such hardship and such lack these are the ones that in such a short time I shall cause them to lose faith and hope in their wicked and selfish ways things and life 
are about to change dramatically upon this planet. Your family, Nada, Kuan Yin, and many of the ascended host, they are your family. They are your ascended family. There are only a few of us that do not come from your ascended family. My mother, Saint Germain, and your beloveds, a son and mother Akasha. And although they have been visitors to your world, they are not part of the ascended family that is your family. Your ascended family are those ones who came to the earth with you almost 15 million years ahead, 15 million years ago. And just a little while longer or a little while before you did, achieved their freedom and the ascension. It has always been the great plan of life that there would be those who would lead the way. Yet let all those remember who are leaders and who lead the way. Thou must remain at the door that you open for others for a time will come that you must close that door but the world you leave behind is a world you never enter into again for thus is the ways of our universe no one turns backwards everyone and life moves forward and then becomes the inexhaustible journey of visiting life upon this planet. Systems of worlds, billions of planets, perfection you have not yet even dreamed. Let us get done this work on this planet that we may move forward and give the freedom to the people and resurrect them and let us take the peoples of earth and your beloved planet and all kingdoms that share life upon your planet with you. Let us bring life to the fulfillment of its destiny. Let us raise all life into perfection. That all life begins again in the fifth and the greater octaves of life or the great electron of God's heart demands only the existence of perfection. Your time is short. Charity, the 13th goddess, was amongst you this weekend and I encourage you that as much as you may remember me and Mother Akasha and Lord a Son and the mighty Saint Germain in your prayers. Remember charity for she has the power to restore joy inside you. A joy that cannot be touched by anything in the world. This is the promise, ye shall make an effort. Lose not your way in these times, for answers 
or rather questions that do not yet seem to have answers. Enjoy a good mystery <laughs> while some things might yet be a mystery to you. For this too, for I say unto you, my evolution is cosmic. Yet there are things in this universe that I, the I am that I have become, have not yet seen. And I look forward to a very long holiday. <laughs> Once our work is complete, there are systems of worlds I have not seen. Yet I am with you for another 10,000 years. Then I shall return to my people. And then we shall go on a holiday. <laughs> now remember, thou knowest not the moment that I shall come unto thee. Yet I shall come. And of course, you have the free will. You have the power to influence that moment be sooner rather than later. It is your great gift. Where does desire come from, children? It comes from love. Where does love come from? The mother's presence. So let yourself be filled with great desire. For I say unto you, I am coming. I have come to those in the past. I have come to artists. And I have saith unto them, Paint for me. Paint for me an image. An image that can be caught in their minds that their hearts may seek to fulfill. Such an image that I have called forth through an artist in your world. You shall see this image if you look for it. And you shall see me walking up a cobblestone alley with a lantern in my hand and I come to knock on your door. I am coming. Bless the lantern of light that is within your heart. Call upon your great I am presence to take up that lantern of light we shall see how soon I may come unto thee. Promises must be fulfilled. Words spoken by a cosmic being. Messengers are chosen. From the great Archangel Gabriel the messenger of all messengers who came to my grandmother, Anna, and notified her that she would give birth to a child girl, and she must call this child Mary, and she must raise this child like a princess for she shall give birth to a king. Messengers are important. Whether they come from on high or whether they are visible amongst you, bless your messengers while they are with you that the great blessings of life may return a great bounty upon your lives. In the words of my ancient language, 
that I spoke when I came to your earth. Adonai, Adonai, Adonai. May the blessings of the cross of resurrection be upon you, blessed family of eternal roses. God bless the Queen of Heaven. I thank you.